All right, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this package, which contains a Raspberry Pi with all the different stuff that you need for a Raspberry Pi to actually use it, I think. Uh, I've never used a Raspberry Pi before, but what we're gonna do with it is we're then gonna set it up to be like a local web server here in my house. And we're gonna try to create an API for it as well using Flask and Python. And then basically have like my own secret web server here where I can just uh, connect to it and like do different things through it, even if I'm not in the house. Okay, uh, future Cal here. Looking through the footage, I just realized that I did a shit job explaining what we're gonna do. So let's just fast forward this part and I can try to do a better job explaining it here. No promises though. So what we're gonna do today is like I said, we're gonna set up a Raspberry Pi to use as a web server where I can host my own little private site for performing certain tasks in my home. I will create a Flask website slash API that I will be able to connect to from anywhere in the world that will be hosted on this Raspberry Pi. My first use case will be to turn Philips Hue lights on and off remotely. And right now I need to be connected to the right Wi-Fi to be able to turn my lights on and off from my phone, which can sometimes be annoying because this often leaves me needing to reconnect to Wi-Fi and or disconnect from the current Wi-Fi that I'm on and connect to the Wi-Fi that my Philips Hue uses. So I figured let's create a server that is always connected to the right internet and then host my own API on there that I can then create an app for so that I can then turn my lights on and off from wherever I am in the world. So this is one of my first of many Raspberry Pi projects. So let's go. Okay, so this doesn't seem like it's working. I wasn't, I didn't have high expectations to be honest, but now I've unboxed it and now we're gonna go into my office and then we're gonna actually try to get this thing to run. Yeah, and let's see what we can do. All right, so I'm now in my office again and uh, we're gonna try to again connect this but we're gonna connect it to this monitor here and see if we can uh, get it up and running. All right, it is running. And now we just need to get it to connect to the monitor. As you can see, we have the Raspberry Pi running right now. We just need a mouse and a keyboard so that we can do things on the actual Pi. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually build out a an API using Ross, using Flask and Python and uh, try to see if we can create some certain commands and then connect this to a web server, create some sort of domain. There's a place where you can get some free domains and that's what we're gonna do. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this actually goes. Uh, so as it turns out, there was something wrong with the, the Raspberry Pi or the OS or something. So I'm reinstalling Raspberry Pi via some sort of like imager. It's basically just raspberrypi.org slash downloads. And then I'm basically downloading the version for Windows. And then I'm basically just fixing this thing so that I can run uh, the Raspberry Pi again. Because it didn't, it turned on, but it doesn't actually turn on because there was some sort of error uh, as per usual. So. Now I'm just waiting for this and then we're gonna see if we can get it to actually run. Okay, so now I think it's done. Uh, not sure if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. Hopefully it will. Ooh, I think it's working. All right, so uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually write the code for the Flask API. Basically just get all of that going on my main machine's Windows desktop. Once we have that running, we're gonna actually install it onto the, the Raspberry Pi, and then we're gonna go through all the steps of like creating the actual web server and like hosting all that stuff on uh, the Raspberry Pi. But first of all, we're just gonna uh, basically create something so that we can actually do something by basically using the API. 
I think my bridge hue is not a unique IP address. It's like local IP address. It's not something that you, if you would Google it up, you wouldn't find my IP address based on that, I don't think. I think you can use a, an actual unique IP address and you can find that for the bridge hue, but I won't really need that, I don't think, because my Raspberry Pi will be connected to the same internet that my bridge hue will be connected to. So I don't think I'll actually need that. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna see if we can just connect the, the Raspberry Pi and basically install this script onto that thing, run it and see what happens. Oh, and uh, while we're on the topic, this video is sponsored by Kite. Kite is a free auto completion engine that uses machine learning to provide the completions, which is what makes it stand out and also what makes it the best auto completion engine that I've used. One of the most useful features is that Kite's completions are sorted or ranked by relevance instead of by popularity or by the alphabet. This is possible because they're using machine learning to provide the completions. It means that you will get suggested completions based on the code that you're actually writing. And if you're writing code in Python, the Copilot feature offers documentation lookup, so you don't have to constantly Google search function signatures and call patterns. With Kite, you can actually write code up to 18% faster. And who doesn't want to write code faster, right? So I highly recommend that you download Kite and try it out. It's completely free and supports up to 13 programming languages and 16 IDEs. So just give it a go. I know that you will like it because I love it. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna go to GitHub. I'm gonna download the repo and then start trying to get it to work on the Raspberry Pi. Once we get it to work on the Raspberry Pi, uh, we can start to try to make these calls. And once we've got that working, then we're basically just gonna have to set up the web server and have it like be something that's constantly running on this Raspberry Pi. Okay, so this is the day after and uh, yesterday where we got or where we ended up was basically upgraded the API now and I can turn all the lights on and I'm running it on my Raspberry Pi. Uh, so now if we press enter on this command that, or on this uh, site that I'm having up right now, then that will turn all the lights on. So let's just do that. As you can see, that light turned on and there's a light above me as well that turned on. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to actually get this because right now I can't, if I try to access this from my MacBook Pro, then I can't actually get to the website or I can't get to the local host, uh, which means that we need to make it so that it's available publicly and that's basically what we're gonna try to do. And I, I'm not sure at this point what that actually is, if it's, that we need to run a web server or what what all of the steps kind of mean. I'm guessing that we need to do something called port forwarding, uh, which I'm not at all an expert in or I don't know at all too much about this. So that's basically the goal for today is just to be able to access all of these things through my uh, MacBook Pro. And then we're gonna see where we'll take this from there. 
All right, so future Cal here again. And uh, like I said, I had no idea what I was doing at this point, but I was sort of on the right track. Here is what I spent the next eight hours struggling to figure out. Eight hours. Firstly, I need to run the Flask website on a server hosted on my Raspberry Pi. To do that, I need to set up something called Apache and run an Apache server on the Pi and then run my Flask app behind that Apache server. I don't quite know the ins and outs of how this works, but I followed this really great tutorial. After getting this to work, I needed to do what I briefly mentioned before, which was port forwarding, which meant that I needed to log into my router and port forward from the router to the Raspberry Pi's IP address. This is so that the Raspberry Pi server can be visible from outside of my local network. Again, I don't quite know, but luckily I didn't need to. I just followed this great second article on how it works. After that, I just needed a domain name to connect to the site, and I got a free one for this from noip.com. And that's it. Done. Okay, so I spent the entire day just trying to get the web server up and running and now it is running and uh, I've gotten everything to work. So now that I can actually access uh, and do different calls and do different things remotely and I don't have to be connected to my local Wi-Fi, I can be connected to 4G or anything and I can turn on and turn off my lights via the Philips Hue API. So uh, this now works and what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna finish this by uh, putting this into the little box thing. But yeah, anyway, now we're gonna just set this up for permanent use here in the apartment. All right, so now I'm done with this whole thing. I've got it running and I can now pull, like actually do commands and the server is now public so that I can actually access this from anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you kind of how that it actually works. So as you can see now, we're at the base of the project, which is just gonna say hello Cal and that's where we go this is where we're running the Flask API thing. So now essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this light on and off via the API. So we're gonna type in light and then slash and then the ID of this light, which is gonna be number three. And then we're gonna type in slash off. And this should turn this light on off when I hit enter or okay. So let's press OK and see if it works. Okay, it says internal server error, but that's because what I'm trying to put out to, to this screen doesn't work. I'm doing something wrong there, but it did turn off the light. And what we can do then, do then is we can type in, instead of off, we can type in on. And this should then turn back on. And it does, so that works. Uh, we also have commands for turning on and off all of the lights. So now we can do light slash off. That should turn off all of the lights that I have. Um, so let's do that. And as you can see here on the screen, lights are off is the output that we get. And as you saw, this light's turned off. And there's also a light above me that turned off. Uh, I'm gonna turn them back on because I basically want them to be on. Oh, it's so difficult to do this on the phone. On, enter. All right, now they're on. Okay, so that means it works. Okay, so that's it. We now have a Raspberry Pi server running and we can do some basic URL slash kind of API requests to it. That will do certain things in my little apartment here. So like turn on and turn off the lights. And this is just a super basic project, but I'm really excited about it. And it's something that we can expand on in the future. And I want to turn this into more of a series on my channel where I do like Raspberry Pi projects uh, that I think will be really exciting. 
And in other news, I also have something else that I wanted to kind of tease in this video. And that is on next Tuesday, so in the next video that I'll upload, Tuesday 8th of Dece December, I will announce something new that's really exciting and that I've been working on for a while. And that's also part of the reason why I couldn't continue the daily uploads of videos because this project and daily uploads and all of the other projects that I have going on, it just took up too much time. I wasn't able to do all of those things at once. So I'm super excited about this project and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I wanted to save this announcement until the end of the video because I know that of all the people that watch this video, not a lot of people will actually watch it all the way until the end. So I kind of wanted this to be something where if you watch this to the end, then I really appreciate you for doing that. And so you will also be part of the smaller group of people that will actually hear this announcement at all. All right, so I'm gonna have to like stop it there because otherwise I'll get carried away and like reveal it before Tuesday. But anyway, uh, I really just wanna say that I appreciate you for watching this video and I appreciate you for being subscribed. And uh, yeah, I hope I'll see you in the next one on Tuesday.